few uh, writers today and their heads. Um, I'm going to begin uh, with a um, story about the author's head. It's called Punishment. I've seen an author's head. I saw it in Paris at Natural History Museum. On display were the skeletons of Siamese twins, kirotic livers, and other examples of nature's playful scorches. They were stored in glass jars filled with formalin, but time had seeped through the glass and warped the tissues so that now they were gray. I would have gladly learned what liver looks like, what spleen and heart look like, but now all I can say is this, they all look dull, with white filament drifting around them, their tips swaying back and forth in the aquarium filled with formalin, like the hair of the Medusa. The only exception was the author's head, his bloodless face was frozen in violent spasms and his white hair growed at the surrounding liquid as if fishing to recapture the escaped spirit of the novel. You could tell straight, straight away that he had never achieved what he had longed for with those tens of thousands of pages now being nibbled away by mites in the basements of second-hand bookshops. Though his pen had probed deeper and more purulent cavities than any other, though he had thrust his hand in the racked gullies of the gullet and with his nails ripped bloody discords from the, vo from the vocal cords, he had not dared to reach deep enough and had not pierced his reader's stomachs with, with hooks of pleasure. That is what it said on a label stuck to the side of the jar. His punishment was to spend the rest of eternity pickled informally, with all his senses intact. And thus, with frozen eyes, he could do nothing but stare at the tourists, whose secretly cherished feelings as they walked past were a mixture of pleasure, shame and sympathy. Thank you.